In this next module, we'll start with our base feature from our previous exercise and begin creating additional features. During this process, we'll identify the next features to be created, not in CAD terms or tools, but in common design terms. In regards to the caster base that we've been working on, we're looking to identify things like rounded corners, mounting holes, or the clevis that holds the wheel. Every time we identify a feature, we'll need to determine how to create them as a sketch feature or as a place feature. Before we begin, let's take a second to re-examine the finished version of the part. We've already got a square base created, and from here we can attack this in a couple ways. We can add features in a similar order to the way the design might be manufactured. Or we can simply add features in order of difficulty. In this case, I think I'll choose the latter. In regards to difficulty, place features are typically simpler to create. The triangular shaped clevis that holds a wheel, for example, would be more difficult because it would require a sketch, since there is no way to simply place that feature. If we take a look at the part from the top, it's easy to identify rounded corners that are missing from our base feature. For this, we'll use the fillet tool since it's a feature that can easily be placed on our base feature. We can also work on adding the mounting holes. Some tools with an inventor can be placed or sketched. The hole tool is one of them. Based on what we just discussed, we'll add the rounded corners as a place feature, as fillets. And we'll add the mounting holes as a sketched feature. We'll sketch the holes basically because we can add multiple holes at once. Let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. If we have our caster open, we'll go ahead and begin by adding the rounded corners or fillets. We're going to go ahead and go to the modify panel and launch the fillet command. When you do, you'll notice again that we have a collapsible dialog box and a mini toolbar. At some point you might decide to save some screen space by collapsing the dialog box and only using the mini toolbar. For now, we'll go ahead and keep the dialog box open. You'll also notice that there are several different ways to apply fillets. Currently we're set to create fillets using edges. An important thing to note is that almost all these dialog boxes, regardless of whether it's this fillet command dialog box or any of the other dialog boxes, they're all set up by default using options most commonly used. This is true throughout Inventor. If you take a look, you'll notice we're now being prompted to select edges. Notice the tool shows zero edges selected and you can't click OK. You need to pick at least one edge before you can click OK and create that fillet. So let's go ahead and pick these three edges. And on the fourth edge that's currently hidden behind the part, there's no need to rotate your part to be able to pick it. Instead, you can pick right through the part and it'll highlight the edge so you can select it. You'll notice again we can pick and drag on the arrow to size the fillet or we can simply enter our value in the dialog box. Now remember the mini toolbar and the dialog box have the same exact option so you can count on that throughout Inventor when you see that mini toolbar. Let's go ahead and enter 0.375 for our fillet radius. Notice we can also click to add another set of fillets that might have a different radius. That way we can get a little bit more done in one feature or command. Let's go ahead and click OK. Let's go ahead and launch the whole command from the modify panel. Click on the pull down to see the different placement methods. Most of these can be placed on faces or points or circular geometry without a sketch. But you can also use a sketch to create and locate a hole. In fact, this is the only way that I know of for this tool to place multiple holes at once. This is the option that we're going to go ahead and use. However, we first need to create a sketch, so let's go ahead and hit Cancel. Go ahead and launch the 2D Sketch tool from the Sketch panel. Since we have existing solids, the origin planes no longer show up like they did in our first sketch. You can still select them to sketch on, but you'll have to select them in the browser instead. For this exercise, we're going to go ahead and sketch on the top face, so let's go ahead and pick that. While we're in sketch mode, we can draw circles to represent the holes and cut them out of the solid. However, we'll want to use the hole tool to make them more intelligent. In order for the hole tool to use a sketch, the sketch needs to contain points. The hole tool will then use these points to locate the holes. Instead of drawing points and adding constraints to locate them, we'll launch the project geometry tool to pick the top face and to project all the edges associated with it into our sketch. These edges are associative to the top face and they'll update if the top face changes. 
Let's go ahead and right click and choose OK. The reason I chose to add these fillets first is so that there would be arced edges on the top face. Our holes will share the same center point as the arcs or fillets. This is part of the design intent. And so when you project an arc, you also project its center point. And we'll be able to use these center points as a way to create our holes. However, when you launch the hole command, you'll need to select these points one by one. Not a problem. However, instead, let's go ahead and hold down our shift key and select all four points. We'll then go to the format panel and click on the center point button. This will change the visibility of our points to look more like center marks. It'll also make it easier to select the points while in the hole command. It'll change the behavior. Let's go ahead and click Finish Sketch. We're now ready to launch the hole command from the Modify panel. When you do, you'll notice that Inventor assumes the placement method is from Sketch. And because the points in our sketch are formatted as center points, the holes are already selected. Our holes will go all the way through the solid, so we can now change the termination to Through All. We could size our holes manually here. However, the intent is to place a 3 8 faster through this hole. So we'll need some clearance. This is where the hole tool is more intelligent than simply sketching a circle and extruding it as a cut. The tool is aware of all the different types of holes that exist, counterboard, countersunk, threaded, etc. In this example, we'll choose the clearance option. When we do, the bottom of the dialog box will open up and we can specify that a 3 8 inch hex bolt will be used in this hole. We can specify the fit to determine the clearance required. We'll use normal for this exercise. Later, when you create a drawing, this information can be automatically extracted in a whole note. Go ahead and click OK.